Exercise Ice Maiden will hopefully be the first all-female team to cross Antarctica coast to coast via the South Pole in 2017. This team will be made up of five women from across the British Army. We will be faced with temperatures down to minus 40, wind speeds of up to 50 miles an hour. The journey will be 1,700 kilometres in length and take us hopefully 75 days. We'll be pulling all of our own kit and equipment. Our sledges will weigh about 70 to 80 kilos. We'll have two collection points along the way where we'll collect food and fuel. I'm telling you about this today because that's the fire that's burning inside me. And I'd like to take you all on a journey now, if I may, uh, on a journey for you to find your spark and maybe if you've got your spark already, to start building that fire burning inside you. To start the journey, I'd like to go back to when I was a child. So please, if we can transfer back in time, hopefully not that long ago, to when I was 14. When I was 14, one April Sunday morning, I was watching the London Marathon. And I remember vividly, Gail Hebrill Selassie crossing the finish line first and um, the elite men and women coming in behind him. Age 14, I decided that one day I was going to run a marathon. That was going to be my challenge. Like any 14-year-old would, I decided to go for a run along the canal that afternoon. Did three kilometres, it felt like an absolute distance and I was absolutely shattered. But I felt like my marathon training had started. Never in my wildest dreams did I think that I would do this before I was 20. Age 19, I ran the London Marathon. It wasn't easy. When I got to 20 miles, I hit the wall. Everyone's heard about the wall. So at 20 miles, I hit the wall and I hit it hard. It hurt. I started walking. To make matters worse, the oldest man running the race in his 90s ran past me. <laughs> no lie. So I had a long, hard look at myself then. I couldn't believe this 90-year-old had run past me. And I thought there and then, if somebody in their 90s can run a marathon, then me, age 19, has got no excuse. So I vowed then to run the last six miles and not walk a step. And I did. And it hurt. But I finished it. So that was my first spark, age 14, of endurance and outdoor activity. So I followed that spark through to 19 and did my marathon. The second time I had that spark was aged 15. So if we can go back in time now to when I was a girl guide leader. As you can see there, I'm collecting my Baden-Powell Award. Um, at my uh, girl guiding meetings, there was a lady called Annabelle Davis. That was my leader. She was a massive inspiration to me. She's a doctor, a radiologist by um, profession. She used to be in the Territorial Army as well. Um, and a lady that I really looked up to. And one um, uh, guide evening, she said to me, Natalie, I think you should apply for the selection weekend to go to an international jamboree. I listened to her uh, with the support of my parents. Off I went to the selection weekend. That was in the Peak District. And my main memory from the selection weekend was uh, being woken up at 2 o'clock in the morning, being told to get outside, pack our bags, we were going through customs. So there we were in the school um, yard where we'd been staying, in the drizzling rain, because naturally it rains in the UK all the time. Uh, and it was dark. And I had my little hand torch. Head torch hasn't been invented. Um, and I absolutely loved it. I absolutely loved it. Um, I don't know why, I just did. And that was that second spark inside me. I couldn't say why I loved it, but I was having such a great time. Um, two weeks later, so I thought nothing of it, left that um, selection weekend. And then two weeks later, I got a phone call when I was back at home. Mobile phones weren't really around those days. Landline for phone call. Um, and I got this phone call saying, congratulations, you've been selected to go on an international jamboree. I thought, OK, I'm probably going to get offered France or Germany. That's generally where the girl guys were going at the time. If I'd done really well, I might go to Scandinavia. I could not believe my ears when I was told Russia. Didn't know much about Russia. Didn't even know they had a different alphabet to us. Um, and my parents didn't have a clue either. Um, but with my parents' support and with Annabelle, my guide leader's support, I spent many a night handwriting letters, because we didn't have a computer in those days, um, to charities, did backpacks and raised all the necessary funds, and off I went to Russia. And that's where I got that second spark. I got that second spark for adventure, for travel, um, for pushing the limits. And I met the second girl guide leader, a lady called Liz Hurst the second inspiration, uh, insp inspiring woman that I've met. Now, Annabelle and Liz had a completely different way of leading. Annabelle, being a, a doctor and in the reserves, was very much, this is how you do things, follow policy, do it correctly. Liz, however, was very much like, let's learn by our mistakes. And boy, did she let, let us make some mistakes when we were age 15, 16 in Russia. Um, so, uh, they were those two inspiring women and the two sparks I've had, the London Marathon and then um, going to Russia. And the spark for Russia, the top photo there, the lady that's carrying the um, hedgehog, that's actually Liz, and I'm the lady to the right there. Um, because a few years after going to Russia the first time, Liz asked me to become the assistant leader to take another group of girls. So I was about 19, um, 
to Russia for the second time. So this is my first um, spark. And I've asked you to come on a journey with me, so we're going to fast forward a little bit now. So I've done the London Marathon age 19, I've been to Russia a few times and I've had that spark for adventure, that spark for endurance. And I've been feeding that fire, I've got a little fire building inside my belly. So I've been doing that now ever since. And what I then started to do is something called adventure racing and ultra marathons. So adventure racing is where you cross country run, mountain bike, and kayak from point to point orienteering, generally in a team of four, generally mixed male and female. So in my team, I'm often the female. As you can see from the bottom right photo there, one of my teammates has got his hand on my, in my back and he's pushing me up the hill. You can always go faster than the slowest member of your team. I'm often the slowest member of the team. I'm often being pushed really hard to make sure that our team can move forward. Now, there's some very low moments when you're adventure racing because you're at the back. You know, the guys would attach a bungee cord to their bags and then attach it to my waist belt so I get dragged up a hill so I could move faster. <laughs> Sometimes I do question why I do this. Um, <laughs> You can see me in a bog in the middle of um, the Costa Rican uh, uh, mangroves there where we're trying to find a checkpoint. I got sent out because I'm the lightest. I might not sink so much. Um, now, the reason I'm telling you about these things is because it's not all plain sailing. Listening to that park, spark inside you and building that fire and really following through your passion is difficult. There have been some really tough times. I've been at, the, um, at a race where we've been going for four or five days, maybe only had four or five hours sleep in that time, where... I'm really at the back and I'm physically absolutely exhausted and think, why am I doing this? The reason I'm doing this is because of my team. Because if I gave up, my whole team would have to pull out. And I think that's the really important thing. What I learned from my girl guiding days is about teamwork and about moving forward and really believing in yourself, believing in the importance of helping others. The bottom photo in the middle there, uh, where I'm looking down at the floor, I've been awake uh, I've been going for four days by this point. I've had a total of two to four hours uh, sleep a night. I'm doing an ultramarathon in the Arctic. I'm at a very much low point here, but the reason I'm carrying on going is because the goal is to finish and I'm never going to give up. But there's also the highs where you cross the finish line as a team. And, you know, that journey, that pain has all of a sudden disappeared. So again, I'd like to start thinking about your spark. So we come back to Ice Maiden. Now, how did Ice Maiden come about? What on earth possessed me to want to cross Antarctica when it's minus 40 with 50 mile an hour winds and um, I'm in a tent for 75 days with five, or four other women and I can't escape? I don't know. No. So there's a lady called uh, Nix Weatherall, a good friend of mine. She called me up one summer uh, afternoon and said, Nat, there's a race called the 6633. It's an ultra marathon in the Canadian Arctic. Have you heard about it? Yes, I've heard about it. It's in the top 10 of the hardest ultramarathons in the world. Um, no, I do not want to do it. But if you want to do it, I'll support you. <laughs> so Nix calls me up a month later. She's very persistent. Uh, and she says the same again. And I say, yes, again, thank you very much. I'll support you, but no. She calls me up a month later. She knows I'm easily swayed. Uh, and uh, she says the same thing. But then she says, but I want to take the first all-female team to cross Antarctica coast to coast via the South Pole. And I want you to help it happen. I said yes. So since that, that, that phone call, we've done quite a lot of uh, work together. And we um, opened this exercise up to the whole of the British Army. Regulars and reservists, you only had to be a female, you only had to be in the army. No qualifications required. 250 women had a little spark inside them when they saw this advertised, and they all applied. From that 250 women that applied, because they listened to that spark, we took 50 to a selection weekend. Unfortunately, we couldn't take everyone to Antarctica. So we took 22 of them to Norway. And these are the photos you can see now, is where we took some women that had never, some of them had never skied before, some of them had never been to a cold place before. And we taught them how to survive and how to live in a cold place. Um, and we accumulated in um, doing something called ice breaking drills. I'm going to show you the video now of the ice breaking drills.
that is the famous ice-breaking drills. The lady in that clip would describe herself as a bookworm. She's most certainly not. And the reason I've chosen this lady, Stephanie, uh, as the example is because you just need that spark and you just need to listen to it and you just need to uh, fill, be, feed that fire and get things going. So she had a little spark when she heard about Ice Maiden and she's been really successful. She's still on the final 12 now. We've got 12 going to Norway in a few weeks time. And since then, over the summer, we've had the 12 women. We've been uh, training hard to get ready to go to Antarctica next year. We've been dragging tires, uh, incredible amounts of times in all sorts of locations. Uh, we've done, Stephanie's done her first mountain marathon. Um, she's also uh, learnt to um, repair tents in the, with her mittens on. And she's also learnt to do crevasse rescue. So she's, again, a bookworm, remember, has thrown herself off a cliff and then been pulled out off that cliff uh, while we're practicing to get out of crevasses, which we'll uh, face in Antarctica. So the reason I'm telling you about Stephanie is because she's just a normal woman and anybody can achieve anything if they put their mind to it and they listen to that spark. What I'd like to do is to finish on just one final thought. We've just heard about failure. In the military we say something, something along the lines of pain is temporary, failure is forever. The thing that you fail at isn't, what, isn't the activity that you haven't achieved, it's the fact that you haven't given that activity a, a thought. You've had that pain and that thought about doing something, but you failed to see that through. That's what the failure is. I'd ask that rather than being the failure of not doing something, I'd like you all to, we started on a journey earlier on this morning, I'd like you all now to think about what your spark is. It doesn't have to be a physical challenge. It could be poetry, it could be something arty, it could be um, going and helping in the community, or it could be walking a mile. It doesn't matter what it is, the failure is the fact that you're not listening to that spark inside you. So I ask you to listen to that spark, get that fire burning, and please, let's not put them out. Thank you.